um, our next session, how emerging technologies are shaping enterprise software, I would like to introduce you to our speaker, Dr. Martin Heine, Head of New Ventures and Technologies and Managing Director at SAP Labs Berlin. Martin, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay, I just Yeah, hello everyone. I hope you can uh, hear me well and good to see you. So how is the energy level in this room? <laughs> yes, very, very good. I hope I'm not the only one who's standing between you and cool drinks outside in this beautiful location. So I will make it quick and I will start right away. Because today I want to talk about emerging technologies and how they shape or even disrupt the enterprise software space, because it's really important to see what's going on out there and how to use them in an enterprise uh, context. And this is also very important, the word enterprise. We're not talking about consumer software. There, things are always a bit easier and mostly also not that critical. In enterprise software, we need to make sure that if we build something, it needs to be reliable, it needs to be work, it needs to, to scale a lot. So about myself, so I'm now more than eight years with SAP. I have a background in computer science and uh, economics, so uh, b business basically. And uh, I work, I'm based here in Berlin, and I work for SAP in the new ventures and technologies department. Actually, if you wonder, so that was me actually some years ago, but I learned that maybe L'Oreal can help me to look again like this. So that, that would be quite, quite cool. So also their technologies uh, might, might help. So you know SAP is in the enterprise space, and uh, here on the slide you see a nice slogan. So businesses um, are complex, and they are, can be very, very complex, but running them shouldn't be. So that's, that's the idea, but unfortunately that is not always the case. And especially in times that we face today, where we had like uh, COVID for two years, we have now this terrible war in Ukraine, so businesses are much more complex than you might think. And this creates a lot of pressure to the executives, to the executive boards and companies, and they're looking for, for help, for solutions, and they also would like to use a technology for it. So one example is that uh, a lot of customers approach me, or also like SAP, of course, and they say, we needed to change um, also like how we do business, because like before COVID, it was like more like a demand-driven business. You could basically produce as much as you wanted, and then you would just see oh, how big is the demand. And this completely changed because of the supply chain disruptions, and now it's a more like a supply-driven. You look like, how much can you actually produce? And like one customer shared that they, their backlog increased from one month, that was the, the standard business, to two years. And that's like really disrupting their kind of business, and that's where they reach out and say, okay, is there a way you can support us to, to, to run our business, to steer our business. So, as you might have seen also in the news, so we are very proud because SAP turned 50 this, this year, so 50 years SAP, if you think about it, it's a very, very long time. And the, the interesting thing here is if you think about like what SAP does, so we have uh, invented the ERP category, so Enterprise Resource Planning Systems, and interestingly, the, the, the fundamentals of why you would use a system and how you would use it, they are still the same. So in the end, it's about running business processes, then storing these transactions in a database, your system of record, and then also you want to do some analytics, you want to steer your business, you want to find out how your business runs. So this is still the same, actually. That did not change over 50 years. But what did change is the underlying technology and therefore also the capabilities of such systems. And like SAP started on mainframe computers, I can ask here, who has seen a mainframe computer in, in, in production, not in the, in the museum? Still some people, that's, that's, that's great to hear, but like it's not the majority anymore. So from mainframe, then you went to client-server architecture, so that was basically the hype then also around R3. 
And then suddenly you had to, suddenly, I started uh, quite some years ago, but for SAP maybe suddenly, you had the cloud world. And this was also a completely different, uh, different game for, for SAP. And these are the step changes and technologies that we need to pay attention to and we need to react and find out how to use them, for example, for SAP systems. And uh, where we stay today, that's basically the status quo. That's where you see the SAP's mission. SAP says, we want to enable every enterprise to become intelligent and sustainable enterprise. And on the left-hand side, from, from, from um, my point of view, you have the industry-specific processes, so the end-to-end -end processes, that's where everything uh, starts and ends. Then you have the software as a service layer, and then you have a, have a platform. So that's basically how it is today. And then you have, of course, business networks e emerging, but that's how SAP operates, and that's what we offer to our customers. But in, in, in my organization, we, of course, think about, OK, is this, can we challenge the status quo? And then we say, OK, let's put in ambitious uh, goals and say, how, can we, how does the next 50 years look like? And probably that's a bit too ambitious, because 50 years is a very long uh, time uh, horizon, especially for a company who's like a public company who's quarterly driven. So therefore, we reduce it more to five to 10 years, which is still a very long, long time frame. And basically, what we do is, we look at technologies, technology trends, and find out how to use them in an SAP context. And uh, one example here are three technologies or technology trends that we're currently looking at. And the first one here, Metaverse, that's like, like I don't know how you experience it, like, but for me, it's a huge hype topic. So it suddenly came out. There was then Facebook who said, oh, we are now called Meta. Now there is the Metaverse. And then suddenly there was really some some panic mode in the business because then also the executive board reached out to me and said, yeah, you have to look into this metaverse. I read there's a market opportunity of one trillion. What can we do there? Customers are asking for it. And I said, okay, what, what, does, uh, what uh, does our customers want to do in the metaverse? We don't know, but it's a one trillion market opportunity. We need to do something. And this, is, this reminded me actually some five years ago when there was this blockchain hype, where we say, oh, there's blockchain. Let's do something with blockchain. We have some problems here. I don't know if it makes sense to use blockchain, but let's use blockchain for it. And, and here, it's really important that you have actually some dedicated teams who can really try out and find out what are use cases that really make sense for using that, that kind of, of technologies. And the good thing here is that we think we have some interesting cases that uh, we will then prototype and then really also validate with customers if they make sense. So for, for example, on, on Metaverse, we can uh, think of Metaverse, I mean, it's clear that there will be some kind of Metaverse. No one knows how it really will look like, so it will evolve over time, but it's, it's, it will be some kind of an extension and there will be a big business opportunity. I don't know if it's one trillion or 10 trillion, or it's, it doesn't matter, but there will be some business happening in the metaverse. And then from an SAP point of view, it would be more about finding out how can we actually support these kind of businesses. And then I can, for example, ask a simple question like, if there is business in the metaverse, how would you make it auditable? How would you pay taxes in the metaverse? for example. And then you need to find a bridge between current systems and then the business in the metaverse, and you need to find a way how to connect these kind of systems. Or another example would be digital finance, cryptocurrencies. How can you bring these together? How to put, for example, NFTs on your balance sheet of your company? It's an intangible asset. It has some value. So how do you put it on the balance sheet in your SAP system? These are things that we need to, to, to find out. Or how do you pay your, your workforce with cryptocurrencies? I mean, it's somehow possible, but it needs to be seamless. It needs to be integrated in, in the system. Or another technology, and I heard it's also like there's a, some IBM is also showing something in the quantum space here, a quantum computer. That's also a very, very exciting technology where we need to find out how do we use actually this technology. We will not build a quantum computer from SAP, but it makes sense to find out if the quantum computer is ready. From my point of view, it's not ready yet, so we tried it out, and we still see that the problems that we would like to solve with a quantum computer, we cannot solve yet, when actually also not faster or better than with, with regular technology, but there will be a point in time where this will be possible, 
and we need to be prepared to find out how can we tweak these problems, how can we convert them, that a quantum computer can understand them. So this is, this is basically what we do at the moment. And as I mentioned, so we basically divide the world within SAP into the two pieces. So we have the regular business units. That's what you see here on the, on the lower side. These are the, the regular businesses. They have their roadmaps. That's everything that SAP is committed to do. You can see them on roadmaps at sap.com. And then there's SAP's new ventures and technologies, which is basically preparing a funnel of ideas what SAP could do in the future. And that's really, really important. But also here to note, it's not just about throwing ideas, because ideas are very cheap. It's really also trying, trying them out, building prototypes, building first products. So we're an engineering department. That's really important. And to make it more tangible, I have brought a very you know, condensed uh, view of SAP's long-term innovation strategy here. And what we did is we said, with all these technologies that we see out there at the moment, let's create a framework, a direction, where we want to, to put our pr um, um, products or prototypes or projects into. And this is basically the foundation of how we try to rethink the enterprise resource planning category. And we start with the, the first one, that's seamlessly managing resource and finance flows. And this is about the, the change of, of steering of, of companies, because there are two fundamental things that are different today. The first thing is there are new steering dimensions out there. It's not longer just about top and bottom line anymore on the just financial side. Now it's about sustainability, so ESG criteria. And these need to be first-class citizens of your company steering of your ERP system. And it's out there, and I think everyone would agree it would make sense to have them because sustainability is a topic that is important for everyone, for all of us. So this is, this is the, the one fundamental change. And then the second one is, especially in terms of sustainability, it does not make sense to try to optimize or steer sustainability KPIs only on company level. You need to look into the business network across the whole supply chain. If you want to really reduce carbon emissions, look at the whole supply chain. Look at your suppliers, look at production, logistics, and so on. So therefore, you need to be able to steer these kind of numbers across different companies as well. And your ERP system should be able to do that and also have, give you the transparency and being able to also optimize these, these kind of, of numbers. Then the second layer, is about how can we also make the use of, you probably wonder, like, why is AI not on these slides? So for me, AI is now, needs to be everywhere. So it's a, it's a fundamental technology where I think you, it's, you need to use it everywhere. And in the second layer, there's basically the idea of, how can we like, push the usage of AI to the next level in terms of ERP systems? So the first idea was always to, can we automate processes or process steps? And that's what we will do. So everything you can automate will get automated by AI. But there are like situations where you either cannot automate or do not want to automate, where you want to have a human decision, or maybe there are just bad options to take. But can we use the system here to help you basically to reduce the time to insights, so to really detect that there is a problem, and then the insights to action piece where the system understands your situation, where the system understands the context, the user, and basically proposes you the best possible options that the system already pre-calculated. And that's um, what, what we're trying to do. And actually, we have some uh, promising uh, products out there. So one would be around continuous intelligence, so not longer building dashboards or think about like what are KPIs that are important to me. Basically, the system can automatically detect if there is a problem because it looks at data streams, can automatically create a dashboard tailored for your needs, and can, pro can propose you the different actions. So that's also possible today. It's uh, yeah, not a full-fledged product yet, but we have some promising uh, prototypes that are actually also in use by, by uh, customers so that you can have a look at if you would like to. And then the third layer is around composability. And here, if I have uh, some more time, I guess I have some uh, five minutes left, let's dive a bit, little bit deeper because this is actually a very, very powerful concept 
that I can think have easy, has even disruptive potential to this ERP category. And uh, here also you have some, some uh, more um, um, uh, um, examples that I already mentioned. So one is Carbon Data Network. Actually, you can look at, at the SAP booth here. Um, there's uh, some folks who can give you a demo on Carbon Data Network, how we enable carbon sharing across a business network, how do we solve, like for example, then identity problems, how do we make it auditable, how can you do the onboarding very fast, so Carbon Data Network could be a potential answer to that one. Continuous intelligence, I already mentioned, and on composable enterprise, I would like to dive a little bit deeper. So what's actually the problem that we see? Why do we would like to change something? So we think there might be a better way to bring business functionality to end users. Because what happens today is you talk to a customer, they tell you about the business process they would like to run, and then you sell them a software solution which then needs to implement certain business processes. But actually, maybe there's, there's time for thinking about like the next step where you basically really can provide business functionality, a business process, in the end, even business process as a service, because you abstract the software layer in the end. And that would have uh, several advantages. That would be a very powerful uh, concept. It would give you much more um, flexibility. And it, this would turn the whole thing um, upside down. And if we would do that, you would be able to really change business processes, if you see that there is a problem, for example, there's a supply chain disruption, and you could do this um, without the IT department or even coding skills, because it's basically in a no-code no -code fashion. And we think this is possible. We could provide this uh, to, to customers. And also, like, a, a, an interesting thing to notice is when you see, like, you have the business process implementation, and then many customers uh, find out, many companies, that actually how their processes run are completely different on how they implemented it. And then they use process mining technologies to find out, oh, there's actually a huge gap between it. But the problem is there's also a gap between this process mining, the, the results, and the implementation. And we're trying to close this gap to have like a connection between this world so that you can directly, for example, if you see there's something wrong in the process mining, that you can directly change it in the implementation speed, uh, space. And this would give you agility, that would give you flexibility, this would make it very, very easy to bring in new um, functions, new business functionality, also from third-party providers, towards your business processes. And it would solve one fundamental problem that every big company has today, and this is the integration challenge, because your technology stack is completely heterogeneous, because you want to use best of breed technologies, you're just consuming software as a service very easily in the cloud, and then you have different systems, and then you try to integrate the, them all together. If you would change this around, would have like a business process orchestration platform, plug in your business process with these different components, they would be already pre-integrated. You would solve this integration challenge. And to give you an idea what, what this could look like, that's a very simplified scenario, so don't nail me down on this uh, scenario. But if you think, for example, of, a, of a, a supermarket chain, then you want to order something. Maybe nowadays it's very popular to have maybe organic vegetables, so that's uh, it's always nice to have. Then you would have an order, you would give it to a wholesaler, they would create an offer, and then they would, hopefully, if you accept the offer, would do the delivery of it. So if you want to introduce like a new process step and would say I want to do like a credibility check because I want to know like that this supplier in the end is really certified that they can really um, give me the organic vegetables, then you would need to do some coding, some customization, and that's today really, really hard to do. In, in our future vision, it would be basically just a component that you would drag into your business process the system would care, take care of the integration, and this would just take like minutes in the end and not days or, or weeks. And then maybe basically as, as the last uh, slide, so this is how a first mock-up could look like, how the, the project that we're currently running is thinking about it. You would see here the different process steps, 
you would basically click at a component. It's similar, like, similar on the iPhone when you go into the store and you just click on the functionality that you want to have. The app gets installed. It just works. So here, the same idea. And think about the catalog of thousands of business functions that you can then bring together in order to create new business process solutions that run out of the box. And then you would do some, some configuration maybe for the modules, but then it would just simply work. So this is uh, what we're currently working on. And if you're interested, you can also join uh, Marcus Krug's session tomorrow to learn more about what we're doing in the Web3 and crypto space, because there are actually a lot of cool projects that are going on. Or visit our SAP booth, or ask questions later on to me, or even tomorrow I will also be here. So with that, I guess I'm almost perfectly in time. And uh, yeah, thanks for your attention. And uh, yeah, join me later for a cool, cool beer in the sun, hopefully.